Well, welcome back to Rise Exchange. Now, the statistics are alarming to say the least, and of course a shocking new report from the British government says the number of antibiotic resistant infections around the world is increasing each year. About 50,000 people die from drug resistant superbugs in the US and Europe, and the number could rise dramatically killing an additional 10 million people a year and cost up to $100 trillion by 2050 if these superbugs are not stopped. Now, Jeff Crawls is a drug industry expert and the CEO of Crystal Research Associates. Welcome to the program. Good Thanks for joining us. $100 trillion sounds like an awful lot of money. It's a lot of money. I mean, when you take a look at the, the worldwide domestic product was $74 trillion. When you take the U.S., China, and Germany combined, it's $30 trillion. I think $110 trillion is, is, is excessive as far as the estimate. So where does that figure come from in that case? Well, they've, they've tried to estimate lost production, lost economic value, the increased cost of the medical system. To put things in perspective, at the United States Centers for Disease Control estimate that the AMR, the antimicrobial resistant drugs in the United States, cost an additional $20 billion to the healthcare system and $35 billion in lost wages. So $55 billion in the United States is a far cry from, you know, 100, $110 trillion. So to put that in perspective, $16.6 trillion is the GDP of the United States. It puts it into perspective a little bit. So what, what kind of superbugs are we talking about? Let's just clarify that. We're talking about drugs that are resistant to antibiotics. And these, these drugs uh, basically can spread, and any antibiotic you give them certainly causes no, no effect. So it's not that there isn't a problem. There is a major problem that's killing 23,000 people in the United States, as you mentioned, 50,000 U.S. And, and Europe combined. But to think that the pharmaceutical companies, the biotech companies, are not going to do anything about it, they will. They're going to use MES technology, ERP technology. They're going to streamline. They're going to get more efficient. There's a lot of biotech companies working on super, super drugs right now for the microbial-resistant products, and there's device companies companies doing it as well. We expect that the pharma industry and biotech, while the numbers have dwindled from the companies working on it, because a pharma company wants to have a drug that you take every day, cool. not a drug that you take every day for two weeks, but they are not going to let this go unnoticed. And certainly the fact that it, the superbugs have made their way into the food supply is a major problem also. Well, if anti antibiotics are rising on the increase mm -hmm. in that case, then of course then, then the number of antibiotics is also falling in terms of right. its use. So there's a slight discorrelation there. Totally. And uh, the, what has happened is there's only been four new antibiotics basically approved in the last 10 or 12 years because there hasn't been incentive for the pharmaceutical industry. Meanwhile, drugs continue to, uh, the, 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 the bugs continue to mutate themselves and become more antibiotic resistant. Doctors continue just to prescribe antibiotics in, in excess, making the, the next time you get an, an infection, maybe you're, you're resistant to the antibiotics. So it's got to be a change in the attitude of the consumer, a change in the attitude of the doctor, and certainly you saw the Obama administration put the GAIN Act through. They know that this is a problem. It's not going to go unignored. I'm not saying it's not a significant problem. It is, but I am saying pharma and the medical industry and biotech and device companies will respond. Okay, Jeff Ray, finally, which countries are the hardest hit? We mentioned the U.S. and Europe. We talked about these two, but... Uh, obviously, Africa, Brazil, India, China, any of the countries that are growing that don't have very sophisticated medical systems right now. And, you know, the other thing I would keep in mind is this report was put out there as an estimate for 20, 20, 2050. So we've got 36 years to get there, and I'm confident that the number of drugs in development will increase. Yeah, let's hope so. Jeff, we must leave it there. Thank Thanks you so much for joining us. Thank you. Ahead, the race for